Hello, sister. Hello, mom. Hi, mom. Mag coffee tayo. Coffee. Coffee. Mom Rina, coffee. Mag-sound ka, Miss Rina. Wala pa tayong kausap. Mag-sound ka. <laughs> Miss Rina, mag-sound ka. Magkape tayo. <laughs> Sound ako nga pala. <laughs> Ma'am Rina, mag-sound ka. Sabi ko <laughs> Good afternoon po, everyone. Uh, we still have four minutes, ma'am. Four minutes. Sabi ko, sabi ko, sabi ko, sabi ko, sabi ko, sabi ko, kasi may four minutes. Yes, ma'am. Hindi, ma'am, mag-coffee po.
WhatsApp message or post your questions in the chat room or write them as your comment on our FB page and we'll try to answer them during the question and answer portion or session. The host for today's webinar is the Mid La Union Campus. So this morning, aside from the messages of our University President and Vice President for Academic Affairs, we were supposed to listen to the message of the Chancellor of the Mid La Union Campus, Dr. Eduardo C. Corpus. But before we listen to his message, gentle reminder to our participants, especially our participants on Google Meet, to please turn off their microphones or mute their microphones in order for us to avoid unnecessary feedback or hear background noise while we are having the video meeting. And gentle reminder also to our participants on Google Meet, now, if your video is on, please avoid also distracting movements, you know, that might distract our participants on Google Meet, especially our speakers. So for this afternoon, before we listen to our first speaker, uh, may we listen first to the message of Chancellor Eduardo C. Corpus. Uh, the Mid Union Campus is the host of today's webinar. Let's listen to the message of Chancellor Eduardo C. Corpus. Three, go, sir. Good morning and welcome to the first session of webinar on the development of instructional materials and construction of performance-based assessment hosted by the Technology Hub of the University, the Mid Union Campus. The webinar aims to equip faculty members on the different mechanics and trends on the development of instructional materials <coughs> and construction of performance-based assessment essential to the delivery of quality teaching learning experience, most especially during the new normal. We believe that an equipped pool of faculty members with strong administrative support is our best asset in reaching out to our students and fulfilling our vision to be a premier and globally competitive university. Thank you and I hope you will enjoy the sessions of our webinar. Mabuhay ang Timsu, mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you so, Thank you much, so much, much, Sir Chancellor, Sir, for, Chancellor for, for, uh, uh, your message, your message and, and for hosting our webinar for today. And for our webinar, webinar for today. So this afternoon, we are still on the development develop of instructional material. So for speaker for today, for this, for this uh, uh, afternoon, afternoon session, session is from, from the Union Campus. So our first speaker who will be sharing his professional expertise in developing OBE materials is an associate professor of the university. He obtained his degree in Bachelor of Arts in English, Master of Arts in Education, Arts in Education and Doctor of Education at St. Louis College. College. At present, she teaches at she teaches English, English and is teaching professional, professional subjects and methods of, and methods research. of research. Also, he has also he has basic English grammar and co-author in study and thinking skills, purposive communication, English for academic purposes and results. Moreover, he has presented his research outputs in national and international conferences. He is a resource speaker or learning 
learning, a learning service provider, service provider in different, in public, different and public, public and private and agencies. Private agencies. Further, further, he's a member he's of a professional, member of professional organizations, organizations like international, like international associations, scholarly publishers, 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 editors, editors, editors and incorporated, incorporated, speech communication organization of the Philippines, incorporated, reading association of reading association of Philippine association, Philippine language teaching for language teaching, incorporation society, Asian society for teachers for research incorporated. I don't want to keep you want to keep you waiting. Join me, join me, Doctor Hartwell, Doctor Hartwell, Norman. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Well, well. Right, well. Hello. Shall we start now, Mamina? Yes. Okay. Um. Good afternoon, everyone. So my topic yes. for today is developing outcomes-based education or OBE. Okay, po, sir. You mean I'm sorry. Okay. Again, my presentation for today is on the developing of outcomes-based education or OBE materials. So most of us now already know about OBE. There are a lot already who came from different trainings and workshops regarding this OBE. Um, this is just a re reiteration, information dissemination on, on how to develop materials in an outcomes-based education. Um, now that the new normal, as we call it, actually I don't want to call it new normal, but we are more on the adjustment of the new normal. Um, with this adjustment of the new normal, different pedagogies or strategies that we need to do as educators, um, we really need to adjust. And I think this is very timely, having such um, webinars and sessions. And we are so thankful to our university for having us uh, this kind of session. So I hope you would enjoy and uh, um, I hope some, you will learn something from this presentation. So what are our objectives for the day? So for the first objective, what is OBE? Um, I'll give you um, the simplest definition of OBE. Because in other, probably, seminars and trainings you had before, especially for those who, who do not have an idea about OBE yet, especially for those who are fresh graduates or probably who are non-educators or teaching in the college level, probably this is an opportunity for you to learn. And then the second one is designing OBE materials. So how are you going to design your materials? How are you going to come up with materials that could easily understood or it could be easily understand by these two students that we have? Especially now that we are going to adopt flexible learning or blended learning. And the third one is what to look for. So after knowing all the knowledge about OBE materials, what will you do now? What would be your next step? Okay, as educators. Okay, so welcome. As you can see in the picture, there is a smiling person there, but with a mask. And I hope, even though we are wearing our mask, 
we are still smiling deep inside. Okay, even though we are suffering from this pandemic, we are still smiling. So welcome is a very powerful word. It's just, it's more than a word. It is something your students feel when they are with you. If you welcome your students with open heart and you, you are smiling, definitely you can attract them. And it would be easy for them to be part of your lecture, to be part of the classroom. However, now that, that we have this adjustment of the new normal, we can still do this one, okay? And we can still smile at them. If they are in need of someone to talk to, we will use the technology, okay? Next one. Dream big, set goals, take action, okay? As educators, we dream big for our students. We give them the best. We bring out the best in them, okay? And that's the challenge for us teachers. After dreaming, we set goals and make sure that our goals are realistic. It's achievable. It's uh, measurable, okay? So after that, you have your goals already, your aims are there, and now you take action. How are you, how, how are you going to implement it? What method are you going to use? Is it achievable? Is it measurable? Okay. So those are the things that you have to consider as educators. And according to Talker, 2004, um, he emphasized his description of OBE as the process that should involve the restructuring of curriculum assessment and reporting practices in education. Um, I think the university already restructured our curriculum in an, OBE, in an OBE manner. And then of course, you, uh, you, you are being trained already on how to assess in an OBE manner. And of course, practice that one in education. Okay, we always go back to the vision, mission of the school, to the learning outcomes of the courses that we have in the university. Those, um, those are our basis, okay, to come up with a good OBE materials. Now, what is OBE? Okay, it is an educational method that focuses on what students can actually do after they are taught. I would like to emphasize what students can actually do after they are being taught. Now you're done with your discussion. You're done discussing with your students. The problem there is what can the students now actually do after that? So that's OBE, okay? And the philosophy, of that grounded on a vision for your school. What would you like your students to be after graduation, after they are done with their course, after they are done with your lecture or lesson? Okay, that's the philosophy behind OBE. What students can actually do, okay? Whatever course would that be? engineering, technology, agriculture, social sciences, education, everything. What students can actually do after you are, they are being taught, okay? Let's go to the next. Another one is OBE is a response to the standardization of education systems and processes. We need to standardize our system. Okay, and you have to make sure that it is being processed in a way that students can really understand and can come up with something after they are being taught. Okay, and according to William Spady, William G. Spady, all students can learn and succeed, but not on the same day in the same way. 
that's why students, we have a lot of different personalities among our students. They cannot just learn in one day. And in the same way, they can learn. Okay, that's why we have multiple intelligences. Okay, they may not be good at this part, but they are good on another part. That's why we teachers also need to assess their intelligences. Okay. According to the father of OBE, Dr. William J. Spady, um, he said that we have to define what students are expected to learn and redesign the system to make sure they have maximum opportunity to learn it. I would like to emphasize again, expected to learn. That's why at the start of our our discussion inside the classroom, we give already our syllabus to our students. We give our topics already, okay? What they expect, okay, inside the classroom with the, with the course that they have or with the subject that they are enrolled with. And it's time to redesign the system, okay? Um, I know there are a lot of old methods or traditions that we are still doing as teachers, it's high time to redesign it, remold, remodel it, okay? Because we have already different kinds of students nowadays, okay? We have the millennials, we have the judgments, those who are sensitive, those who are insensitive, okay? So we really need to check also our system. And OBE is learner centered it is teaching the students the way they will they will easily learn i would like to uh, get the idea or uh, i would like to quote what the former senator miriam defensor santiago said that our role as teachers is to cure the ignorance of the students not to terrorize them okay not to give them a lot of work but at the end of the day they did not learn from it you are so strict and yet they did not learn from you okay we need to cure their ignorance and we have to make sure that we give the best way for them to easily understand and learn okay look let's try to check this um scenario the first one there, I taught Stripe how to whistle. And then the second one, I don't hear him whistling. I said I taught him, I didn't say he learned it. Let's try to reflect regarding that one. See, you taught him, but did he learn from what you from from your teachings? Even though you feed them a lot of lessons and knowledge, but they did not learn from that, it would totally be useless. When we're stuck with old school, that's old school, old, um, old tradition we're in, you feed, give back, lecture, sit work, and then goodbye. Next class, lecture, sit work, and then next class. And then exam, you're done, done with the subject. Again, if you pass, good, fail, repeat, and then next sem. When we are stuck with that, and we should not be like that, and we shouldn't be doing like that one, okay? So what OB is student-centered? We focus on the students, on the learners, okay? And then as a learning model, outcomes based education starts by asking what does a learner need to do to demonstrate mastery of a particular skill knowledge or behavior you ask that to yourself you ask that to your strategies and pedagogies can they uh, demonstrate mastery of their of a certain particular skill like for example those in the technology programming okay or how to weld how to uh, 
operate machines okay knowledge or behavior um are our students going to have this good behavior or attitude after graduation okay such an approach puts student needs student needs at the center of the learning design process so the students uh, students are our core okay they are the ones that we really need to train okay for them to 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 master their skills knowledge or behavior another one through obe there is clarity okay given that all learning objectives in an outcomes based education model are clearly spelled out ahead of time learners know what's expected of them and can adjust their focus and questions more appropriately um did you ask yourself sometimes are your students asking you questions inside your class or if you ask them do you have a question and then they will say you don't have a question anymore because probably they're hungry probably you just want to go home okay but the OBE will help you let the students ask more questions appropriately, okay? And learners know what's expected of them. So later on, you will expect from your students that ah, they will be a good, um, they will be they will be good in programming, okay, or in horticulture and other skills that they need to do, okay. Another one is flexibility. I know we teachers are flexible physically, emotionally, and most importantly, financially. We flex, we flex okay? okay? An outcomes-based education model must be flexible enough to adjust to a learner's strength, strengths and weaknesses. We have to determine their strengths and weaknesses why for you to give them the best pedagogies or strategies methods activities assignments lectures examples because if you give them those things which is anchored to their strengths and weaknesses you will bring out the best in them okay and that's being flexible as a teacher okay that's why we teachers we need to search for a lot of things just to give our students the best PowerPoint presentation, the best lecture, okay, for them, okay. Flexibility is also important for providing learners enough time to attain fluency and proficiency. Um, there are some teachers they will just simply give the lecture give the lecture give the lecture but they do not check already if the students really absorb something okay so outcomes based education versus other models so in OBE there is this mastery based education okay you have here criteria for measuring proficiency adaptive to learner needs learner support provided adequate time to achieve perfect proficiency that's why later on we have rubrics okay we need rubrics and then competency-based education all characteristics of mastery based education plus self-paced let your students also be independent sometimes you facilitate as an instructor okay Outcomes-based education, all characteristics of competency-based education, plus understanding why proficiency matters. You let your students realize and understand how important proficiency is, especially with their course. Because if they are not proficient with it, it would be hard for them to get a job. Okay? So what is competency-based? or mastery, mastery learning, you have there the green one, mas measurable explicit competencies. That's why 
um, in Tesla, they have already the NC competencies there, clear learning outcomes and rating system. I, I hope it's clear all, all, also the rating system of your school, differentiated timely supports. So make sure as a teacher, do not just simply facilitate or give, you have to support also our students. Meaningful and positive assessment. How are you going to assess your students? Okay, through your OBE materials or activities. Personalized learning. There are a lot of activities that you can come up that could relate to students. You know what students today, they are more into situational activities. Not, that, not just the general one, okay? Let them experience something that they could relate to, that they could relate with, okay? And then advancement upon mastery. So after mastering that kind of proficiency, what's next, okay? So OBE, what do you want the students to learn? That's learning outcomes. And then you motivate them. Why should they learn it? Okay. We keep on telling our students already why they should learn from it, but try to deep, um, give deeper meanings and understanding. Okay. How can you best help students learn it? That's teaching strategies. Okay. Um, this is quite difficult for those teachers who are not graduate of education. However, we have a lot of trainings and of course, workshops. And we can also have, uh, you can ask other teachers, okay, peer teaching, okay, to help you strategize. And then the last one there, how will you know if they have learned it? Assessment. How are you going to make your exams? Okay, your quizzes. Is, is it just identification, enumeration, fill in the blanks? Probably there's something wrong if you're just doing that one, okay? The implementation of OBE requires consistency across desired outcomes of education, teaching and learning activities, and assessment methods and practices. So basically, OBE is a flexible, student empowerment-oriented approach to learning, okay? And what are the challenges? time and energy okay you produce meaningful content it's hard to produce okay but it takes time and energy construct reliable metrics for success that's why you have to make your own rubric you have to make your own activity so that you can really check okay and support students with regular and substantive feedback and interactivity Students nowadays, they are more on physical activities, okay? They are more likely with that. So you give them also some physical activities, not just um, pen and paper, okay? Disruption, such a shift in how instruction, assessment, and support is organized can be disruptive, but if it's well-managed, it can yield remarkable results for learners and institutions that's why it's a challenge for us teachers okay on how to assess and give support okay to organize such lecture or activities so intended learning outcomes what can students do at the end of the course and then what learning activities will help students achieve these learning outcomes and how do you know if a student has achieved these outcomes. We discussed this one earlier already. So what are your intended um, outcomes, learning outcomes, and then what are the activities that you're going to give? That's why later on I'll share to you some of the activities that you can also give to your students, okay? So we have the benefits of OB here. Students will become analytical and creative thinkers, problem solvers, and effective communicators. Not just knowledge anymore, okay? Because employers nowadays, they want graduates who are problem solvers and effective communicators or creative thinkers, okay? 
Second, they will know how to collect, gather, and organize information and conduct research. Okay, they will be more aware of their responsibilities to the environment and the people around them. They can be socially responsible already because you've given them OB, this OBE, Outcomes Based Education. So what are teaching learning activities? It could be active learning, it could be immersive learning, or it could be collaborative learning. Active learning, as you can see in the picture there, all of them are active, not passive. All of them are working, okay? Especially group discussion, there's a leader there, the leader will do the work, and then the leader will present the rest. They will just pay. That should not be. Okay? And then immersive learning, you immerse them. But with the pandemic right now, I think there should be a limitation about immersion. Okay? And then collaborative learning. Even though they are at home, as long as there is internet connection and technology, they can collaborate with a certain thing okay that depends on the activities given by the teacher okay so let's go now to the designing of obe materials okay so planning the resources how are you going to do that the first one there is determine how how best to help students so it's a paradigm shift you are not just going to mark students who are the students here that we are going to help also? So do not mix those students who are very good. Okay, mix them with those who are not that good. Average, okay. And then revisit and organize your learning outcomes. What are your, you can check your learning outcomes in your syllabus, okay. Your program outcomes, the college goals, and of course our vision, mission, philosophy of the university. And then create learning packets, so bite-sized information and activities which are aligned with learning outcomes. You have to make sure that it, your activities are anchored to your learning outcomes. Okay? Baka puros ka naman, identification, enumeration, role-playing, probably you can have other activities of course, anchored to your learning outcomes. So the learning environment needs proper support structures, which means planning for the resources to put these things in place. That's why with the help, of course, of our university officials, we can come up with good resources. That's why our un university is trying to convince us or um, trying to... Uh, uh, make us a module for our discussions or um, lessons so that it would be easier for on the part of the student and on the part of the teacher. However, we still have also other instructional materials, not just the module, okay? And then know what you would like to develop in your students. What would you like to develop to your students? Is it critical thinking and problem solving? Give them activities critical thinking and problem solving okay or do you want them to um have this collaboration how to become effective communicators create activities that could come up with the skills that could develop the skills of the students okay and i think you should incorporate in your activities values and behavior because it's very very important okay next faculty is an important resource it's a, it's an important resource so this systematic alignment of teaching learning activities and assessment past the course outcomes is referred to as constructive alignment that's why we faculty members this is a big challenge for us with this adjustment of the new normal. That's why um, we are given these webinars and other trainings for us to learn and relearn again, assess and reassess again. Okay. 
So in outcomes based, the iteration again, intended learning outcomes. And then what are the activities, strategies, and how are you going to assess them? What are those activities for them to um, do for you to assess? Okay. Topics with course learning outcomes. This can be evaded when trying to implement an OBE. Inheriting an ill-fitting syllabus will blindfold the learners in a long journey. Similarly, following someone else's syllabus cannot do the needful. One has to effectively make the expected course learning outcomes by mapping well-thought-out topics alongside. Um, Inheriting, I, will, I would like to emphasize here, inheriting an ill-fitting syllabus. You want to finish your syllabus, that's why you give them lecture, lecture, lecture. Okay, time is up. I need to finish my syllabus for the whole semester, and then you're done. Problem there is, did they learn something? How will they apply or implement all the, your lectures? Okay, if you're in a rush, okay? Following someone else's syllabus cannot do the needful. Okay, you need to modify also your syllabus every now and then. Okay, of course, still anchored to your learning outcomes. Okay, preparing session, wise course lesson planner. So, a well needed lesson plan for us in the college, I think, um, learning plan is a call for the day. An exciting and effective lesson plan or learning plan is fundamental to instigate the learners and help them attain educational value. However, teachers sometimes fall a trap by failing to do so. That's why it's very, very important that we really need to come up with a learning plan. Okay. That's why... It's a call for our chairpersons to check our the learning plan of our faculty members. Okay, are they really implementing that one? Because it's a plan. So the question there is, how are you going to check if it's being implemented or not? Okay. Mapping questions with course learning outcomes at appropriate levels of Bloom's taxonomy and maps it with assessments. Here we go again to Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so we have here, I'll give you the a little bit of summary of it, the levels of learning, okay? If you want, do not just go on the level one remembering, recognizing, recalling, describing. Go up to level six. Because if you go to level six, that's very, very critical. And you will help the students think critically and analytically. Because remember, the purpose of OBE help our students become critically and analytical, analytically in terms of the things that they need to do after graduation or even during their college life. So these are just sample learning outcomes or learning packet sample using publishers. So at the end of the course, students will be able to for example, this is a language course, beginning language course. So identify most of the frequently encountered endings for end, for nouns, adjectives, and verbs. And then the second one, read, read basic material relating to current affairs and make themselves understood in basic everyday communicative situations. Look at the last one. Okay, there is an application, okay, of all the things that they've learned. Okay. First, what to look for. Okay. First, learning outcomes set the focus of the learning targets for the week. You have to set a target for the week. Okay. Sometimes some, some teachers, they will just come inside the classroom. If they are lazy, okay, copy. After that, okay, next meeting again. Okay. Do you really do you really check your learning plan? Are you really doing your learning plan? Okay, and set um, a certain topic for a certain week. You prepare yourself. Okay, choose the activity that is aligned with your learning 
outcomes. We always go back to our learning outcomes. Integrate it with your learning strategies. Later on, I'll give you some examples of activities that you could uh, give to your students. Okay. Obidize activities. The third one, summarize the activity in a paragraph. And the fourth one, again, do constructive alignment of the activity and the learning outcomes. Did my is my activity connected or anchored to my learning outcomes? So you need to check again. Okay. What are some of the activities that are obedized or that would help you? Okay, assess. Okay. So for IMs, not just modules, um, there are a lot. Okay, books or textbooks, instructional materials. So you can give objective type of activities or analytical and critical thinking activities and, of course, performance-based activities. Okay, I'll give some examples. So the first example here is, for example, you're teaching Rizal. Okay, El Filibusterismo. Instead of enumerating all the uh, characters, why not interconnect them with each other? Like, for example, Simon and Basilio. Okay, you give a short description. What's their connection? And then um, their connection is became partners to fulfill the plan. Okay, and then connect it to another character again. And then what's their connection? Interconnection. Okay, at least in that way, the students will think. Ah, what's the connection? Who will I connect to this character? Okay, so this is just one example. Or are you tired of using the true or false or modified true or false? I know you know this one. It will help the students really think critically and analytically. Like, write correct if the first statement is true and the second statement is false. Or the first statement is false and the second statement is true. Or if both statements are equal or true, you, you put they're equal. Or if both statements are false, unequal. In this way, you let them think. Okay. For example, physics activity. Okay. Name that motion. Okay. You give a situation. For example, um, the name that motion. Interactive consists of a collection of 11 challenges. So each challenge presents learners with an animated motion of a car. After reviewing the motion, one must match the motion to the appropriate verbal description. Feedback is immediate and multiple attempts to get the description correct are allowed. Okay. So in the physics activity, you can let them check the website. And there are activities there. Um, about motions, and they can identify, okay? Or you can give them an editorial um, cartoon like this one and let them explain, let them think what are, uh, what are, the, what are their interpretation about this one? What's their idea about this one, okay? Or Video viewing, you let them watch it. Since all of us are watching from the YouTube or watching from YouTube, you let them watch a certain video in the YouTube and you give them a chance, okay? Or they can make their own blog. They write down their journal, okay? Um, or Glutamax, see the results. They can make their own advocacies. They can make their own uh, multimodal. Okay. And of course, they can make their own vlogs. Okay. What I did with my students before was for them to really uh, um, to become effective communicators, they made their own vlog and they have to speak in English. But the topic or the, the, the thing that they will do is something that they are interested with. There's some they are interested of baking. So they, they did that one, but they have to speak in English. Okay. So you prepare your rubrics. So 
clear definitions of each characteristic of a rubric, clear descriptions of different levels. And because rubrics establish criteria, because it, is, it establishes criteria, they can help make assessment more transparent, consistent, and objective, not subjective. Probably, you know, ah, lagi ko tong inuutusan, sige, mataas na yung essay. Hmm. You're not being objective there, okay? A rubric is a scoring scale used to assess student performance based on certain predefined criteria. That's why it's very, very important to make your own um, rubric, especially for activities, performance-based activities. So these are just samples of um, rubric, so group process and particip participation rubric. And then rubric for written reflection or reaction paper. Actually, there are a lot of rubrics in, um, that you can find on the internet. You can modify it. So you can create your own. Okay. So as a conclusion, the optimal benefits of OBE can be realized if schools will seriously anchor the implementation of the framework on the philosophical underpinnings of outcomes based education that is student-centered and flexible form of learning. See, flexible form of learning. Everything in the educational processes and systems should be based on the outcomes, outcomes which extend beyond academics and reflect real-life attributes, something situational, okay? Teachers and academics must espouse the true-to-form purpose of OBE, which transcends teaching within the confines of the classroom, not just within the classroom, but also to remote or distance teaching more effectively using teacher-made resources. That's why if you made activities and resources, be proud of yourself also because you made this one for your students, for, for them to become a better person someday, okay? Teaching is a calling too, and I've always thought that teachers in their way are holy, angels leading their flocks out of the darkness. We are the ones who will let these students out of the darkness, okay? And teachers encourage minds to think, hands to create, and hearts to love. We have to love our students. If we love our students, we will give them the best. Okay? Thank you so much. Hello, Ma'am Rina. Hello, Sir Hartwell. Yes, Thank you so much. You're and welcome, Ma'am. Uh, welcome, Norman and Marissa, for a very functional and timely presentation. So uh, may we ask our participants on Google Meet to uh, throw their questions to Dr. Marissa. Do we have questions, Paul, from our participants on Google Meet? Uh, we have here a question, sir, from our FB page. Yes, ma'am. Um, Dr. Aryan. Um, Dr. Aryan, we have what? Dr. Aryan, may we? What's the difference between learning outcome and learning objectives? What is the difference between learning outcome and learning objectives, Dr. Hartwell? Hello, ma'am. Hello. Okay. Hello, Dr. Hartwell. Yes, we have one What's question here. Yes, ma'am. What's the difference between learning outcomes and learning objectives? Okay, for learning objectives, these are set of objectives or goals that you need to target. 
but for learning outcomes, how can you come up with um, the best strategies for your students to attain these goals and, and these objectives? That's why, what are these outcomes that you're going to make? Um, how are you going to assess it? What are the activities? And then you can come up with this learning outcomes. So this learning objectives is already set there, okay? How you're going to uh, implement that one and what's the result of it, learning outcomes. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Hartwell. We have another question. Yes, Bob. Um, it's from... from we have another question from Dr. Alan Gil Alimala. We were told to follow the OUM module format, but their format is not yet obidized. They still use learning objectives. Okay. Um, I think the university will help you with this question because. Um, the module that the OUS is, uh, that they have now, I think um, some are OBDI, some are not. So probably it's high time to re restructure it. Probably we just will come up with another meeting or session about it, one to improve and make it OBDized. Okay, uh, Dr. Hartwell, for the information of everyone, we already conducted a meeting it was already agreed that we are going to use learning outcomes instead of learning objectives. Objectives, okay. Thank you. Uh, so when we prepare our module format later, uh, we should make sure that we are concentrating on the learning outcomes instead of the learning objectives. Objectives, okay. Okay. We have another question. Paano po gagamitin ang OBE ngayon sa paggawa ng mga modules na applicable sa course namin? Um, Again, ma'am? I think that's a question from us, Dr. Aryan. We will be guided. So to answer that question, uh, for our faculty, we will be guided by our uh, approved learning plans and syllabus, which are already OBE-based, and also our learning plan. So we will be guided by our learning plan, by our syllabus, which are already OBE-based. Okay, so we have other questions. How about from our participants on our Google Meet? Do we have questions? For you? Okay, so thank you so much for joining us in our up, uh, afternoon session's first topic. Our speaker is Dr. Norman Mirza of the Mid La Union Campus. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, po. Okay, so before we introduce our second speaker for this afternoon, at the start of our webinar, uh, we had difficulties on our audio and uh, we, you were not able to listen to our um, good news. 
Okay. So, again, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. First of all, uh, thank you for joining us for our first session this morning. I think it was quite successful. In fact, we are very happy to inform you that this morning we have 97 participants on Google Meet and over 3,500 views on our FB uh, official DIMSO page. So once again, we would like to encourage you to like and share this afternoon session with your social networks. Again, if you have questions for our speakers, please send a chat message or post your questions in the chat room or write them as your comment on our FB page and we'll try to answer them during the question and answer portion. I okay, sir. That sir, that now, uh, we recognize you for your question. Hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, po. Turn on din po. Uh, okay, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay, na your question, sir. Uh, Ma'am, can I ask questions related to the topics one, two, three? Because I was not able to join this morning, but I watched the replay. Let's see the replay of uh, lecture of Sir Albay and Sir Carrera. Okay, sir. Sige po. Okay. okay. Uh, first is uh, to Sir Hartwell. He mentioned about the OBDICE, but in the case of engineering, I think there are some faculty who send into a training uh, in the Result Technological University and the framework that they taught us is about the ZD CDIO. Uh, Sir Hartwell, are you familiar with the CDIO framework? CDIO. Conceptualize, design, implement, operate. And there's also a uh, rubrics on this framework. Uh, Dr. Hartwell, are you still there? Dr. Hartwell, are you still there? What? Hello. Hello. Hello, Dr. Yes, yes. Hartwell. Did, uh, did you hear the question of Sir Tatao? Sir Tatao, maybe ask me a question. Yeah. Sorry, Sir Hartwell, but this is about OBE. So, uh, Sir Luis, may we uh, ask you to please repeat your question for Dr. Hartwell? Okay, I will cut it short. Uh, sir, are you aware of the CDIO format, which is an, also an OBDICE, especially designed for technology and engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am not familiar with that, sir, for technology and engineering. Uh, CDIO Probably you can share us, uh, CDIO stands for the construct or conceptualize. You conceptualize, then the student will design then mm -hmm. implement the design then after the implementation of the design is the operation which is similar to the application and for the uh, cdio format there is also a rubric rubrics to be followed for the, the reading that's why i'm asking whether uh you are familiar with the cdio cdio framework for technology and engineering Thank you for uh, sharing. I think so. Okay, sir. Uh, 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 Mambuding. Uh, sir, I think, sir, so sir Luis, yeah. I think what you are, uh, you know, sharing to us right now, sir, is I think it's still within the framework of outcomes-based education, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, particular for uh, engineering courses. Yeah, for engineering courses. 
Ma'am, uh, as I said earlier, can I ask questions related to topics number one and topics number two? Early this morning. Okay, sir. You may fire away your questions. Uh, according to Dr. Carrera, instructional materials are all forms of material or materials arranged systematically used to help teachers, instructors in conducting learning, etc. Then, uh, uh, on the lecture of Dr. Albay, I think he's concentrated on the module. That is why I asked this morning whether the book that I have prepared is, do I need to convert it into a modular uh, format? But uh, in the instructionalist, uh, uh, Sir Hartwell discussed also that it is not only a module, which is uh, an instructional, instructional materials. There's a lot of IM. Now, in our case, we, are, we will be using blended learning, of course, use of the print and the social media. And my follow-up question, can I not use my developed textbook, work text, workbook, workbook to be the instructional material to submit to the university? And it will be um, used as a basis for my online discussion with my students. Or do I need really to convert this into a modular type? Um, sir? Uh, for the books that you were already able to publish, they were already copyrighted, right? Yes, so if you want into a module, of course, it should still pass through the IM's committee and should be evaluated by the IM's committee, sir. No, you have the option to turn it into a module, but it should still be evaluated by our... Uh, Instructional Materials Development Committee. Okay. Uh, related to this, ma'am, I think the university, correct me if I'm wrong, especially on the uh, I am headed by Dr. Carrera, there is a memorandum of agreement signed between DIMSU and the IPM publishing company. And I think uh, we have a lot of writers from the university who is an author, uh, writer of that. What will happen to their... Uh, Sectional materials published under IPM. As okay, sir, the same dean for. Uh, it should still be submitted to the uh, I, University Instructional Materials Development Committee for evaluation, sir. So that's our university policy, sir. All instructional materials, uh, books, should still go uh, undergo you know, the evaluation of our IMD committee, sir. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh the question is, I think the deadline for the submission for the clearance for process is June 29 and June 30. Included in the uh, clearance mm -hmm. are the IM. Now, what I'm pointing out now is, of course, uh, I do not know with the right other writers on how many days, how many weeks, how many months to prepare the IM. What I'm uh, appealing now is, can I submit first my uh, books as an IM? But not as not a module for the for you to evaluate whether uh, I can use these book, uh, books for uh, instruction. During, sure, uh, sir. You may know. Uh, yes, sir. Of course. You may you may write a letter, sir. Prepare basic communication requesting that you need your uh, instructional materials to be evaluated by our IMD committee, sir. Uh, th that's my only point uh, uh, on my questions done be this morning. Be before <laughs> we're going to use them in our... Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Did, were we able to answer your question, sir? Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for accommodating my questions and thank you for the, all the speakers. Sir Hartwell, thanks. Okay, sir. Thank you thank so you much. Also. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your question. Okay, so thank you so much again, Dr.
Lisa, for coming back to answer the questions, helping us answer the question of shirt at now. Okay. Now for, I think we are ready for our second speaker for this afternoon session. Our second speaker session for the topic enhancing learning through innovative and digitized learning materials very interesting is an associate professor of the university he finished bachelor of science in computer science at union christian college master in information technology at dimsu midlaun union and doctor of philosophy major in technological education management also at uh, Jim Su Midla Union Campus. He was awarded as the Campus Researcher of the Year in 2014 and the College Faculty of the Year in 2015. He is an assistant project leader of the specialized IT training courses for faculty and staff of higher education institutions in Region 1 and also an assistant project leader of modernizing the DIMSU MLOC ICT Research Center. Moreover, he is a certified flexible training tutor of the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, or CIMEO, a LET board passer, TESDA NC3 virtual graphics design passer, and Philips IT passport passer. He attended international and national seminars and trainings, to name a few, for the Flexible Learning Capacity Building Workshop in Seoul, South Korea, for the International Conference on Equal Educational Opportunities by Ubiquitous Learning Orientation Workshop on Strategic Thinking and Innovation Course sponsored by Kenyo Inter. Without waiting any longer, may I present Dr. Bernardo de la Madrid of the Mid La Union Campus. Good afternoon, po. Thank you Good very much. Sir. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. everyone. Thank you for yes, ma'am. Thank you very Good much. Sir. You may so not begin uh, your presentation, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. So again, thank you very much for this invitation to be part of this webinar series for, for DIMSU. And uh, I am actually tasked to talk about the strategies as to how we can effectively extend our instruction delivery through digitization of learning materials, most especially during this time of pandemic. So let me just share to you my presentation. So I just hope everybody can see my uh, presentation, which is entitled Enhancing Learning Using Innovative and Digitized Learning Materials. So basically, this pandemic will not end soon, but learning must continue. Education in the time of COVID-19 is expected to be in the context of the new normal to respond to the ongoing pandemic. One facet of the bigger challenge is preparing the education sector, preparing our teachers, and at the same time our students for various scenarios under the new normal condition where traditional modes of learning might no longer be possible. So for this afternoon, I will be sharing with you some insights as to how teaching and learning may be done in the digital era, how we can transform learning with innovative use of technology and uh, digital tools that teachers can use to digitize their learning materials. So some people say that the digital era is a knowledge-based society. So this is a type of society that is needed to compete and succeed in the changing econ economic landscape of the modern, modern world. So students at present are in a knowledge hub where it depends totally on the efficiency of a teacher to choose the reliable and accurate 
data from all the available sources in the internet. So this knowledge hub is basically powered by the internet. This is so massive where it can be accessed by students by using a desktop computer, a laptop, or even through their mobile phones. So teachers must step up to ensure that information being accessed by these students are factual and accurate. So the digital era is a challenge for teachers, most especially to those who are not technology savvy. Shifting from the traditional way of teaching into online mode poses difficulty to them. And aside from the fact that we have these diverse students, existing pupil teacher ratio, more digital native students, and students' learning styles. So when it comes to diverse students, we all know that our students come from different backgrounds. So during this pandemic, Economic condition is our main concern because of some issues on internet connectivity, on the availability of computers or laptops from our students and teachers. So we are all aware of these struggles because we do experience them too. So with regard to pupil-teacher ratio, flexible learning requires a minimal number of students to participate in a certain online class session in order for teachers to manage it properly. Before this pandemic, before all of this happened, we already find difficulty in managing 50 students or more. So as we shift to flexible learning, we have to seriously consider this number. Well. If we cannot go away with the reality, then we have to move on as to how we can continue developing our students' critical thinking. Also, our students are digital natives. They are born with technology. At an early age, they are, they are primarily exposed to technology like smartphones, tablets, iPad, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat. So even before they stepped onto the classroom, their first learning environment are these platforms. They have learned how to count one, two, three, or how to recite ABCs by watching baby TV or Cine Escuela on television. So another is on our students' learning styles. So as teachers, we are all aware of the various learning styles of our students. So there are some students who are visual learners, auditory learners, tactile or kinesthetic learners, uh, but some, uh, there are also learners who are social learners, they have interpersonal skills or solitary learners. With this, we have to let me just touch some of the roles of the teachers. Uh, in the digital era, I think these are the roles of teachers that need reinforcement. So as we shift from the traditional classroom teaching or learning to flexi flexible teaching or learning, let me emphasize the importance of some roles of this teacher during this shift. Teachers could be facilitators of learning, social media communicators, nurturers, and knowledge managers. So as a facilitator of learning, teachers should facilitate collaborative learning with their students, peers, and communities of practice. So, so basically, be aware that students have online access to the internet, hence they have prior knowledge of the same materials uh, which is being taken up in the classroom. And at the same time, teachers of the same subject area who works in the same institution could be a great help. So 
I think this is one of the initiative of the university, especially in the module making, wherein uh, colleagues or peers from different campuses, campuses work together to come up with one module that can be used for the entire university. Another is involving researchers within or outside the institution who share the same interests and problems that could be a great source of latest inventions and discoveries. As social media communicator, they need to reach out to the learner's environment. So they should have the ability to create short YouTube video, conducting webinars, creating online library, and preparing online docs. So we have to reach out to this, uh, to the internet, to, to, to all the things that interest our students. Another is as a nurturer. So teachers should focus on the interests of students and deliver contents of knowledge and persuade them to connect to the world on empath empathizing with how the learner approaches learning. So this is one of the challenges that we usually deal uh, with even in our face-to-face -face classes. So as we move on with flexible learning, it would be a good move to have a collaborative discussion among your peers as to what practices can be adopted by your college or your peers. And lastly, as a knowledge manager. So the sources of information are increasing by the day in the internet. So this knowledge can be useful to learners only when the teacher has the skill to manage and correlate it. So teachers need to be careful in getting information from the internet. So before you digitize a learning material, ensure that the information is reliable. So teachers should know how to find, analyze, evaluate, use, and disseminate information. So basically, teachers are accountable to the society, which trusts them for shaping its coming generations and making the future more progressive. So teachers need to use ICT effectively with its traditional techniques of teaching to facilitate critical and innovative thinking and make a better digitized education world around us. The next one is on transforming learning with innovative use of technology. So this pandemic really forced us to adapt the new normal. As I have said earlier, this pandemic may not end soon, the soonest time, but we are hoping that it will end soon. But hanggat wala ba po yun, learning will continue. And in the university, we are adopting flexible learning. So flexible learning is more personalized and provides more active learning environment. For teachers, blended learning or flexible learning could create a new definition of teaching and learning, or it could become nothing more than a digital version of a traditional notion of school. Since flexible learning is synchronous and asynchronous, teachers and students can utilize these learning avenues or adopt a learning strategy like Google Classrooms, Google Forms, the Moodle, gamification strategy, social media groups, video conference, among others. However, there are certain things that we need to take note if you are to consider adopting a technology or digitize a learning material. So first, do we have the technical and human resource support necessary to effectively implement the technology? So let's try to answer that. So sa, 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 let's try to assess our own, our own organization if we have technical people, technical support necessary to implement such technology. 
So will the existing infrastructure support the technology? Another, can we engage and encourage intellectual curiosity from our students? So is the new technology intervention superior to alternatives or existing interventions? Or will it do new things in new ways or merely serve as an electronic replication of what's already being done? So in here, we have to take note that YouTube presents vast uh, materials, learning materials for students. So one of, my, one of uh, our discussion with a colleague last time is how, how can we edge out YouTube in, in, in teaching our students some things. Because in YouTube, uh, uh, some of our students, they have, uh, we, we actually hear feedbacks from our students. Masakit man po sa loob, pero marami po tayo naririnig that. They, they just go to the classroom just to, for the attendance, tapos sasabihin nila pag di nila intindihan, YouTube ko na lang. So yun po yung challenge sa atin. So how can we engage and encourage intellectual curiosity from our students? So how is this different from existing learning resources using the same technology? So if we have a good grasp about those matters I just mentioned, then this leads me to talk about digitization. And digitization refers to any process that puts analog materials into digital format like video and audio, image, animation, simulation, or digitized learning modules. So digitization is different from digital transformation as the digital transformation refers to a change in the way an institution goes through its primary task to leverage digital tools. So these are some of the materials or equipment needed for digitization. Some of this, we, we, we have some of this uh, like video camera, computer, smartphone, computer software, or a mobile application. So what do we do in order to digitize learning materials? So I, 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 I search some uh, information as to what we can, uh, how we can digitize learning materials. So first we have to identify the need to digitize. So identify the right partner and identify the digital tool to be used. Uh, the needs assessment is very important before we begin with digitization. So there are a lot of things to consider in identifying them. First, the platform's target the learning content, the educational aspect, how it will be implemented, and analysis of the results of these uh, learning materials. As to the platform's target, as to the platform's target, we have to ask ourselves, how many will be the users of these learning materials? And another thing, how will this, uh, how will this, material be distributed? And what languages do learners speak? So that is under the platform's target. Under the learning content, the things that we need to ask are the following. What are your needs when it comes to course content? So basically, as of the moment, I think we are expected to come up with our modules, which is to be passed by tomorrow. So what are the needs when it comes to course content? What are the needs that need to be digitized? Who will create this content? So primarily, since we are the authors of our learning modules, we are expected to come up or to develop or to create this content. And what medium are we going to use? And how can these needs be answered after we, we uh, implement such learning material. On educational aspect, 
how do you want your learners to be trained in using these learning materials? And what place will you grant social interaction? So will, will these learning materials be uploaded in your Google Classrooms, in your Moodle, in, your, in, in any learning management system? But how will the students uh, use such uh, learning materials in these in this mediums? And on implementation, which kind of platform do you want? So when we talk about platforms, we are referring to applications that you can make use uh, for, your digi for your digitized learning materials, for your di digitized learning materials. So it would be possible that you could uh, use a software an a, a open open source software or a licensed software so depende po doon po sa need ninyo and willing ka bang mag mag uh, maglabas ng pera just to improve just to improve uh, your learning materials in the digitization of your learning materials how long should deployment last so how long will the the uh, uploading or the usage of uh, the learning material be accessible to these students? Or do you need support in the implementation? So makakatulong ba ang MIS ng university or MIS ng campus uh, to support the implementation of your digitized learning materials? And what are some possible integrations with the platform? And for the analysis of results, how will, you, how will you assess the effectiveness of each learning material that you made in support to your learning modules? So, so it doesn't mean that once you uh, uploaded or once you develop and uploaded your digitized learning materials for this semester, uh, itutuloy tuloy mo na siya the next uh, the next semester na ma offer yung course you have to review your also your material or get feedback from students who use your uh, learning material so there are also benefits of digitization of learning material so i have here identified and benefits of digitization so we have engagement so Time, location, pacing, individualization, content, sharing, data, ownership, and parent involvement. So when it comes to engagement, this will improve student motivation for engaging content and game-based strategy. So basically, if students know that uh, learning materials are available anytime, they will they will uh, find time to to uh, read or to watch your learning material. Uh, another is time, as I said uh, earlier. If our students can can we we can give our students the time they need to access such material. So sa kanila po yung oras nila as long as we give them these materials uh, for their consumption. So, kahit po na ang, pag, ang, ang, what do you call this? Our students have different uh, learning, learning styles and, they, ha and they, ha they have different uh, modes of learning. Sometimes, mas gumagana yung mga utak nila paggabi, kaya, kaya yung iba, sa gabi sila nag-aaral. And another thing, ang, ang advantage nun is that mas mabilis ang internet pag sa, sa gabi or madaling araw na. Another is on location. So anywhere, anytime learning creates a new world of opportunity. When it comes to pacing, this allows students to progress at their own rate. So ang importante lang po dito is we, give, we, we guide our students in, in the implementation of flexible learning. Even though they have their own time to read or to look at our learning materials, we also have to guide them para meron po silang matapos. And another is individualization. 
So we can customize learning by level and modality. And also content and due to various sources, we are all very aware that the internet is a vast source of information, but not all information is reliable. So we have to, we have to take advantage of this characteristic of the internet to enrich our learning material. So as a teacher, it is our responsibility to look for reliable information. So, and also, information in the internet is updated anytime. So we, it's, it's, a good, it's a good practice if we get uh, the latest uh, reliable information. So we, we, keep on, we keep on updating our learning materials. So it doesn't mean that if you have developed a learning material or digitized a learning material now, you will use that for five years or for 10 years without updating. So since nandiyan naman po yung internet, i-take advantage po natin yung, yung kagandahan ng internet na updated ang information. Another is sharing. Uh, when we have digitized learning materials, we can share such materials to our peers and also to our students, aside from our students. And on data, we can come up with instant and multiple forms of, uh, of feedback uh, from our students or from our peers. So when we digitize uh, learning materials, we can use some platforms for other people to evaluate or to, yes, to evaluate or assess the, the effectiveness of such learning material. And on ownership, students choosing what to learn and how to demonstrate their learning. So students can choose, I mean, what to learn, how to demonstrate their learning. And lastly, with parent involvement, I think this is very important that parents would see what our, what our students are learning from us teachers. There's transparency and uh, we, we can come up with a connection uh, with, with the parents as to how we deal with our online classroom. So here are some of the digital tools. Here are some of the digital tools that you can make use to digitize your learning. So I have searched the internet for this. Uh, I would like to demonstrate number four, which is sketch. So escape lamang po ako dito. Yung sketch po, share ko lang po. Ay, sorry. Let me share sketch. So ito po yung sketch po natin. This is, this is a digital tool that we can make use to screen grab or to screen capture. So if, for example, during our first uh, online class, you would like to orient your students as to how they can manage, the, how they can uh, manipulate the, the classroom, making use of the Google Classroom maybe, or a, your learning management system or a Moodle maybe, yung, yung bibigyan po natin sila ng direction as to what they can see doon sa kanilang, doon sa kanilang uh, screen or doon sa kanilang interface. So, Sketch is a very good application for, for, for this. So basically, we can come up with a screen snap. So for example, ito po, hopefully nakikita niyo po yung screen ko. So for example, we are having the Google Meet, and you would like to explain, and you would like to explain the interface of the Google Meet so ito lang po yung gagawin po natin. We will capture it. And this will be placed on the Sketch interface. So for newcomers, for students who are newcomers, you can actually uh, label, label the interface like this. So what is this icon? So ganyan. Ano pong ibig sabihin? Or let me change it. Yan. What is... What, is, what does that icon mean? 
what does this icon mean and also with that and also with that so po pwede po natin siyang lagyan ng text so po pwede natin sabihin this is the chat box and another is uh maybe this is an icon to view just a sample po Ayan. so eto po yung mga po pwede natin gawin sa sketch we can we can we can use we can utilize sketch uh for or for orienting our students as to how they can uh, manage the interface so kung halimbawa meron po mga sensitive information dito po po pwede nyo po silang ipixelate. So, for example, si Ma'am Maria Teresa Cantilado, ganyan po, kung, kung meron po tayong mga uh, data privacy issues, then po pwede nyo lamang po silang ipixelate. And then you can save. You can save the image uh, as a J JPEG or PNG or the image file you would, you would like to apply for your for your screen capture. So, ito po yung sketch natin. This is only one of the digital tools that you can make use, that we can make use para sa pag-digitize po natin ng learning materials po natin. Yan. Sketch po ang ginagamit po natin for <clears throat> for image processing. So, let's, that, let's just discard. Discard po natin. <clears throat> And may I go back po doon sa ating presentation? So, I'm pretty sure that some of you are, are aware or familiar with this digital tool. So, yung Prezi po natin, uh, some of our students are actually making use and uh, doing well in creating presentations, making Prezi. They are actually tired of... Uh, of developing presentations out of PowerPoint, so gumagamit po sila ng Prezi. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na Haiku Deck. So this is also a presentation application which can be integrated to Google Classroom. Meron din, din po tayong tinatawag na Scratch. Yung Scratch po can be used by, by uh, students age 8 to 16 years old. Ito yung, ito yung isang application wherein students can create engaging projects like games, animations, interactive art, stories, and the like. I think with, with this shift into flexible learning or into online mode of learning, uh, there will be a greater demand, greater demand in our classroom to new uh, computers or tablets na po pwede pong magsulat or mag-draw, mag-illustrate ang mga bata doon sa, doon sa screen po nila. And Scratch is a very good tool for, for, for students to use. We also have Animoto. Yan, ang Animoto naman po ay ginagamit for animated videos. We also have uh, Pixton or uh, PictoChart. Yung PictoChart po muna ay ginagamit for creating infographics, presentations, and poster, and more visual materials. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na Visme, which provides uh, templates and graphic resources to help visualize any kind of data assignment. So, Pixton, a computer program that allows students to make comic books or storyboards. I think po pwede po tong gamitin ng mga nasa my drafting, mga ganyan po. And by the way, if, if I go, can go back to Sketch, uh, engineering teachers, especially uh, the one who are teaching AutoCAD, I think pati College of Technology po yata, they are uh, teaching AutoCAD. Uh, for, for, for those students who doesn't know, who don't know uh, how to manipulate AutoCAD, they can make use of Sketch para doon po sa orientation po nila. Ganyan. Another is yung Glogster na tinatawag po natin which allows you to create multimedia posters by combining text information, photos, and video. We all know Ed Edmodo, Escology, and Google Classroom. So basically, 
Ito po yung mga natakal ko this afternoon in enhancing learning using innovative and digitized learning materials. So as I've said earlier, this pandemic will not end soon but learning must continue. Maraming salamat po. Thank you so much, Sir Benz, for a well-timed and well-designed, well-prepared presentation. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So, do we have questions all from our participants on Google Meet? Okay. We have a question from our FB page. FB page, sir. Um, from Presi Osilios. Ma'am Presi Osilios, is there a minimum specification of gadgets like laptop, camera, or microphone that we can use to digitize our learning materials? Um, I repeat, sir, yes. from Ma'am Presi Osilios. Is there a minimum specification of gadgets like laptop, camera, or microphone that we can use to digitize our learning materials? Thank you very much for the question, Ma'am Presi. Uh, I think it is very important to, to, to consider the, the hardware specifications if we really have to digitize our learning materials. Kung halimbawa lamang po, bibili po tayo ng bagong laptop or computer, as much as possible, ang, uh, po consider po natin dito yung processor po. Pag bibili po tayo ng computer, always consider the processor and the memory. So, yung processor po, as, uh, po pwede nasa i3, i5, or i7, mga ganun po, or with yung memory po niya, tinatawag po na memory, po pwede pong mga nasa 4 or 8 gig na po siya or higher. So kung bibili po tayo certain moms ng mga, ng mga uh, computer hardware, we have to take note of this specification, the processor and the memory. Kung graphical naman, graphical naman po yung, yung paggagamitan po natin, then we should consider yung uh, graphics card po niya. We can, I think we can, we can uh, request our MIS personnel to assist us in, in, in looking for, for good uh, computer hardware. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so far, we have no questions. And also on our FB page, how about our participants for Google Meet? We can ask our questions to Sir Benj. Uh, Sir Ben, so I think I have a question. I want to be enlightened about uh, these different learning elements. Okay, uh, what do uh, for psychology, um, and model in Google Classroom? What are their differences, but sir? What about their features? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I think that is a good question, ma'am. Parang beauty pageant question lang eh. So, <laughs> uh, yung Google Classroom po kasi, ma'am, uh, actually we call the Google Classroom is a Google Drive management, while this Cology is a learning management system po siya. With the Google Classroom, uh, we use the Google Classroom to manage files. Kasi, the Google Classroom is a good avenue for students to share uh, documents. To share documents, documents like an image, like a Word document or an Excel. Uh, you can create your own forms there. You can create your quizzes or assignments making use of the Google, the Google form. And it has the capability also of, uh, for teachers to, to 
uh, compute the grades of of the of the students. Uh, maganda pong maganda pong gamitin ang Google Classroom since lahat po tayo dito sa Dimso we already have a Gmail account through the dimso.edu.ph na na uh, domain po. So kapag meron po tayong Gmail account po automatic we we can access such feature ng Google Drive and the Google Classroom. So that is for the Google Classroom po. For this college naman po kasi I I believe this college is a learning management system kung saan madami po siyang mga features which cannot be found with the Google Classroom. So I think yung mga features na yon na po pwede kang mag-video or mag-record, yun po yung mga features ng Scology. But but there are some there they have the same uh, similarities po ang Google Classroom and the Scology. Thank you so much, Sir Benz. I am enlightened already about these different LMS that we would be using during the pandemic in education. We have another question from Ma'am Annabella Valdez. This is the question, Sir. Prezi is a good tool not only in instruction, but it is indispensable in research presentation. But could we be given a training on this? I, I believe, ma'am, uh, with regard to the utilization of uh, such digital tools, it would be a good practice for the university to come up with the training. But I would like to suggest that uh, campuses or maybe units may, may come up with an assessment as to what tools are they, what tools do they need uh, para po, para po, uh, uh, tawag dito, specific po talaga. Yung kung ano po yung need, yun po maibigay po natin na training. And, and I believe we have competent uh, personnel uh, from the university na po pwede pong magpa-train po sa atin sa mga digital uh, tools po na mga ito. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. We have again another question, pahabol daw po from Ma'am Prezi. Sir, ilang megapixels po ang ideal na resolution ng good camera that we can use? Ah, okay ma'am. <laughs> uh, I'm not quite I'm not quite sure on 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 such a specification for camera ma'am, but uh Depende po kasi ma'am kung sa camera ba ng phone or a DLSR po siya or camera po ng ating uh, computer yung yung uh, paggagamitan po natin. But but it, if if we are going to buy, if we, if we are going to compare, I mean, but if we are going to compare naman po the camera capability of our of our hardware today malayong mas maganda po yung quality po nila kesa nung mga 5 or 10 years ago naman po. Kaya po yung mga phones po natin ngayon, yung camera po niya sa rear and sa front ay magkaiba po siya. Magkaiba po yung uh, pixels po nila. Uh, though I believe yung iba na nasa 12 or 25 megapixels po, maganda na po siya. For videos daw po yung camera, sir, according to Ma'am Presi. Ay, kung for videos, ma'am, yung mas mataas, mas maganda po. Mas, mas mataas po ang megapixel, mas maganda po. Okay. So, any more questions from our participants? Okay. Thank you so much, Sir Benz, for your presentation and for being our speaker for today and for answering our questions. Thank you Thank so you much, much Paul, Sir Benz. Congratulations, Paul, Sir Benz. Thank you, ma'am. So... We already have finished our afternoon session. Once again, thank you so much for our participants on Google Meet and our official Dimsu FB page. For those who attended our first session and second session, the evaluation forms are already posted on our official Dimsu FB page. 
Dimsu, Edu PH. So please answer those evaluation forms for uh, session one and session two so that you can receive your e certificates. Now, your e certificates will be sent to your official Dimsu email three days after our webinar series. We would like to thank our Director of Instruction, Dr. Elsie Pacho, for staying with us the whole day today. We also would like to thank the very supportive president of our university, Dr. Jaime I. Manuel Jr., our vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Honorio C. Bucat, and the chancellor of the Mid La Union campus, Dr. Eduardo C. Corpus, for hosting today's webinar series. Special thanks also to the instruction office of the Mid La Union campus, headed by the head of instruction, Dr. Arian Michel Fabro and the head of the Management Information System, Sir Joseph Pataxil, and his staff. So I hope you had a great and fruitful first day of our DIMSU series of webinars. See you tomorrow for sessions three and four. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.